today is going to be a different uh, different type of video. I'm going to try something completely new because because of me forgetting to schedule basically. I wasn't able to play this at a time that would allow me to record it. So, um, it's not going to be a live battle and I'm going to be talking for a lot more. So, hopefully this, this is going to be more educational than my other videos and I have no idea how this will work out. So, let's get straight into it. Now, you all know my draft. We've seen it before, obviously. Um, yeah. And one thing that is apparent in this matchup is the speed tiers. I have nothing that outspeeds Raichu Alola or Tapu Koko. My fastest mon is a flying type. And is Mr. Mime Galar, base 100, really gonna want to come when they have base 103 rock type, base 100 fire type? Probably not, as well as Blood Punch Sizzle, Mark Punch hit on top. So, when it comes to speed, I have a really, really horrible matchup here, just in terms of speed. But then, we get to my next tier of mods in speed. This is done in speed tier of both of our drafts, by the way. Rotom Heat and Komoa. Well, they have Tapu Koko, so Komoa, kind of out of the question. So, my name's Rotom Heat, it's my fastest one, which I can take a hit, I can take a hit. Don't really take a hit. Can take some hits. So, I kind of have to bring Rotom Heat, but even then, it's slower than a lot of mons that threaten it. So, I naturally decided on a Scarfed Rotom Heat first. Is my team in Yeah, Scarfed Rotom Heat. Ignore it being hit, that's the first thing I decided on. In terms, in terms of speed, and that's why it has to be a scarf set here. And I love the idea of Rising Voltage because Tapu Koko is such a good mon and it just seems too wild not to use here. Being that it outspeeds and beats a lot of my bigger mons. It can beat Mega Gyarados, well, Super Fighter or Mega Gyarados, so obviously it can take it as defensive, it can beat Como. It does start with Nido Queen. Probably won't break type none unless it's running some crazy sets. But that's a good matchup against my fast mons and a really good speed tier here. So I felt rising voltage rotom on heat is really good. Second shot obviously best stab the fire type special mon can run in this. Volt switch, obviously momentum. There is a ground type on Robo Cup's draft and it's Groom Regus, which is one reason why last move and moon guys beam is so good. And another one is because there's just not a ghost resist here. There is no ghost resist. So naturally, that could be a wink on just Scarf Moon Guys being sweeping. And like I said, no ghost resist. So Specs Decidueye, easy next choice. Leaf Storm with Blue Wing, steal the coverage. I didn't really need a fourth move, so I slapped a roost on it. But yeah, modest Specs, and the good thing about Decidueye here is it can take a hit from Coco, it can take a hit from Raichu. It doesn't really want to take it from Nihil, but it can. Victini obviously scares it, Kiram scares it. But down here again, it can kind of hit a little of these middle. It doesn't really hit the middle, but it hits the slower ones. None of these like taking Ghost. That does not like Leaf Storm. So it seems like a really good offensive mon to. Let's say Coco kills something, I bring it in, I get a big hit no matter what. Moonglass Beam hits everything. Pretty spammable, so the, that's hopefully going to be a very good special breaker. And now I have two choice special mons. So, other than a choice special mon, what do I need to break this? Because let's say a special defensive Sizzle or Mega Stabilite could be a problem. And there's another thing you can notice about this team they're all grounded. None of these mons are levitate. None of these mons are flying type. And none of these mons resist ground. So naturally, banded Nido Queen, except I decided I'm gonna change that. I want it to be able to mix up and fire blast on that Coco. So I went with Earth Plate Nido Queen. And obviously two choice special attackers. I'm going to run physical Nido Queen here. This fire blast still does so much to sizzle, so naturally I'm running that still. But, yeah, there is no switch into Earthquake. 
there is no switch into precipice blades it takes two. And with chip, earthquake can kill, kill everything. So that's obviously another good win con. And you should die. Right. But then, like I said, my only speed control, my only fast mon, is a scarf Rotom Heat. So, I need something that deals with Scarfers, something that deals with Dragon Dance Kirim, something that deals with Terrain Raichu Alola, something that deals with Autotomized Sizzle maybe, but I can't really deal with that. So I decide if I want to deal with Kirim as a Dragon Dancer, and I want to deal with Nihilego as a Meteor Beamer, because obviously it's got good special defense, Rotom struggles to kill it. So that's in priority, and let's put Bullet Punch in my metal. I put lefties, I was going to run to sub, I was going to run autotomize, but I I just decided I can't really afford to. I need Thunder Punch, I need Double Iron Bash, I need Bullet Punch, and I kind of wanted to be able to hit Sizzle, so I put Body Press, but yeah, that's what I went with, and Bullet Punch can easily finish off a lot of these mons with chip, obviously 15 is a problem, Blast is a problem, but I can Thunder Punch that. Um, yeah, so, obviously there are some ones like Rune Regis can switch into it, Hit on top can kind of switch into it. Mega Save Light could obviously um, will a whisper which would severely weaken it, but yeah, this side one with obviously Spin Death, so that... I can take a hit from Coco if I need to double iron bash to kill it at that range. I can take a hit from Blastoise if I need to Thunder Punch it. I can take an Earth Power from Kirim hopefully, but obviously I can Bullet Punch it. But if it's behind a sub, like it's like substitute Earth Power set, I need to be able to take that Earth Power, double iron bash it so I can break the sub and kill it. So that's the side I went with. And now at this point, two of my best mods, Melmetal and Nido Queen. Physical attackers, really spammable moves. What if that Mega Sableye comes in, pranks the Will O Wisps before a Mega? So that's a huge problem. What if Victini runs like Serian Shot, Blue Flare, or something, and that burns? What if I get frozen by Ice Beam from the Kirim? So, I wanted a Cleric here. There's no normal type to have Glare, but there's definitely problematic status. So, Heal Bell type Null worked, and obviously Mildrain gives us some healing, but these two moves, why did I put these on it? I didn't want Mega Sableye, because obviously this is Stab Mons, it can run Knock Off. I don't want a Mega Sableye to just be able to knock me off and just sit on me for a bunch of turns, hit me with a Toxic, and then look at that, I have to use more Milk Drinks and they use Recover. And I can't really run like a rapid spin set here because there's two ghosts and both seem pretty likely to come. They both have good matchups in some of my mods. And there's also Blastoise, not Mega, which means it can run Shell Smash. There's Kirim, which can do really well with Substitute sets or Dragon Dance sets. I needed, I wanted to run Mean Look and. Um, run it with Parasol. But obviously two ghosts, that doesn't really work that well. So what did I decide? I thought I would run Parasol on U-Turn because U-Turn can at least hit these two and it's not like I beat Sableye with any of my sets. And I don't really want to stay in on it and get knocked off so I think Fast and Sableye and U-Turning out seems quite nice so I ran that and I put Spit Death on it because obviously Kirim's a huge threat, Coco's a huge threat, obviously they can both run physical, especially in stab mons when they have amazing coverage. Victini is also mixed, like these three here are problematic. Blast is too, you could run Shell Smash physical, but I don't really see that being ran. And yeah, I needed, I felt a special defensive mod to take on Nihil, Raichu, Coco. A lot, of the, a lot of these mons, I thought Spadef was better because naturally I have some, f I have like Melmetal is already physical bulky. I don't know which one Nido Queen is actually better at. I know it's bulky, I just don't know if physical is special or anything. 
Yeah, about the same. But yeah, I thought special defense on Null was a better idea. And naturally, Dragon Dance Gyarados, because why not run it? It's great. Because look, I obviously it doesn't really kill Coco. Definitely doesn't kill Gracia Terrain. But I can Aqua Jet if I have a few Dragon Dances. It stops you from getting swept by a Meteor Beam Nihilego if Bullet Punch Mel Metal drops. Doesn't really care about Victini. Now, when I was building, I was going between Aqua Jet and Sucker Punch, and look at it now. Sucker Punch was probably better. It's Victini, Raichu, slightly weaker against Coco, but that's not a problem. Probably still kills Nihilego. So, yeah. And. Obviously, Shell Smash Blastoise gets the defense drop, so good enough. Sucker Punch was way better, but I went with Aqua Jet. And obviously, Water Resist, what is it? It's um, Kieran Blastoise, and Dark Resist is Hit on Top Coco. Now, that's not the biggest walls. You don't want Kieran and Blastoise to have to be your defensive check to a mon. You don't want Coco having to run too- I mean, you can run Roost Coco, defensive Co Coco with like Defog, Roost, U-Turn, Discharge or something. You could run a set like that, but I felt like offensive, just a sweeping Mega Gyarados was good. And it could set up on Victini, well, obviously Bolt Strike's a problem before Mega, and it gets like, um... I will both the stabs after I've mega yeah. And there's... Who was that? I could set up on him on top. I could set up on... I guess I could set up on Scizor if I haven't mega I resist both the stabs. So I had a few mods I could set up on, so I went with Dragon Dance. And... Yeah, there's definitely some weaknesses to this team. Obviously, that is my only speed control. Wrote on here with a Scarf. I do have really powerful, like bulky attackers here. Obviously all my attackers are bulky, none of them are too fast. Like obviously I'm running speed on that, but still it's not faster than I I believe I believe it's crep for Blastoise. Let me see. No it's Adamant. No, it's it's crept for him on top I think. But I took Dragon Ascent off it in the builder. No, I no it's Sizzle. Yeah I speed crept it for Sizzle, didn't I? I speed corrupt this for Scizor. Melmetal is anti corrupt. Rotom is 280. Where the fuck have I put it at 280? I swear that ties Blastoise. I have no idea. That must be Adamant or something. Adamant Kieran, maybe? Who knows? But yeah, I really don't know why I put that at 280. Oh yeah, that looks horrible set so now. But it's scarfed anyway, so hopefully it doesn't really matter on tying if I get the scarf. But yeah, that was horrible. And this has just obviously specs moon guys. I'm clicking it every turn, depending on how chip things are. Clicking the precipice or earthquake like every turn unless sizzles in. Gunk shot could. Think about it, gunk shot could have been sure up by this team like. 10 minutes. I could have just gunk shot Coco, but I don't need to. There's no reason for gunk shot, I guess. Yeah, I really don't see why I put gunk shot here. Actually, yeah, it's better than um, Earthquake because of sheer force, but then a precipice place, which I believe if I actually let do something that lets me see this. Whereas, um, bounce type one is right. Oh, there's no, they've probably banned Precipice. Okay, yeah, 85. There's no reason for me to, wait, no, no, no. Gunshot is stronger than Precipice because of sheer force. So that's actually my strongest hit on ones like Blastoise, hit them on top, that aren't weak to either. So there is point for Gunshot, but I really don't see myself clicking it here. And yeah. I could get into Robopup's team now, because obviously this is after the battle has happened, I do have the paste, but I think I'll 
show the battle first, because that seems to make a lot more sense. Now, here it is. Yep, let me get the replay open. I have a lot of tabs open, so let's put it here. Now, here is the matchup. Obviously, switch sort of sides, so it looks like I'm playing. And here is what we see. Now, the first thing you should always do when the battle starts is remind yourself what mons they are not bringing. Now, if we look at this, Coco, Raichu Alola. Raichu Alola did not come. What does no Raichu Alola mean? That means that Rotom, unless it's Scarf Coco, has, can pretty much outspeed any of these mons. Unless I was scuffed. No, okay, never mind. I take that completely back. A lot of these could be scuffed. And Kieran, Victini, and Nihilego did all they did all come to the battle. So yeah, Scarfers could definitely be a problem. I don't have a knockoff user. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Let's look what else didn't arrive. Rune Regus and Sableye did not. No Rune Regus, no Sableye. What does that mean? That means that for my current team. I don't, I'm not too scared of Willow Wisp anymore, so Heal Bell and Titan now might not be as useful. But no Prankster Willow Wisp from Sabler. That really helps my Nido Queen. That really helps my Gyarados, although it might give us its not to Prankster, but obviously Sabler can make him Willow Wisp me anyway. And Melmetal, not gonna get Willow Wisps, hopefully. And keep its ability. Keeping Melmetal's ability is huge, so. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, I'm trying to think what game. So it's Coco, Nihilego, Victini, Kiram, Blastoise. Wait, what? No, no, no Kiram, sorry. I completely forgot Kiram didn't come because I was. I prepped a lot for Kiram. I really thought Kiram had a good matchup there. Obviously, Ice Move hits that don't really hit each other too well. Como can be a threat, but it's faster. Freeze dry Gyarados and after it's mega, still do that. Ice hits that, ice hits that, ice, ice hits that, ice and like, let's say Ice Beam, Earth Power. That is most of my team. I really thought here was arriving, so I completely amazed by it not coming. But let's see. So, what do we see on this team? Obviously, there's no ghost resist, no ground resist, we already knew that, there wasn't the option to have a ghost or ground resist. Both the dark resist, no, yeah, dark resist, Coco and Hitmontop did did come, so Gyarados is probably only going to be good late game. I don't want to drag and dance early because both the resist me are there, and he's, he could have first impression sizzle, he could have Mac punch Hitmontop, could be Scarf CC Hitmontop, who knows. So Gyarados is probably going to be good late game here. Let's look at what is good early game though. So there is no ground type. He didn't bring Rune Marigus. So Scuffed Rotom Heat. I can Volt Switch out on Nihilego. Who can I bring in? Probably Nidoqueen or Melmetal. I could Volt. I could Searing Shot Sizzle. Though Victini would probably switch in. Or Blastoise if it's defensive. I'm going to Volt Switch on pretty much everything, really. If Blastoise comes, obviously Volt Switch. Coco leads, I can Rising Voltage. He does not have a good switch into Rising Voltage. I really like his Coco game. Because Coco has a good matchup versus me. I have to abuse it. I have to abuse that. It has a good matchup versus me. It's very likely coming. I can abuse its terrain. I will. Since it's stab mods, I have rising voltage because I have an electric. So I'm going to bring it. And this of course a good matchup on him. So now Lego can obviously threaten Gyarados with Thunderbolt, obviously Aqua Jet's problem, so it may not. So that's with Situi. I don't know what coverage it has to go on, so I've never used it, but it's okay, but I don't see it leaving. Sizzle, I don't see a leading in case Rotom Heat leads. Such a bad turn one. You gotta bring in Victini. And I could Volt Switch. Or, well, you don't really want to bring in Blastoise because you have a fire resist here. That's not weak to Volt Switch. Victini lead, if it's scarfed, it can 
the create U-turn. Honestly, final gambiting me would be probably quite useful for him, although if I'm on top of life, you might save that. U-turn, bot strike, V create. That's a good matchup as a scarf lead. If there's scarf, of course. See that before you forget. No Blastoise. If it's defensive Blastoise, you want to save it for Mega Gyarados. I don't see it leading if it's defensive. If it's Sash Shell Smash. I could have Aqua Jet Sucker Punch, I could have Fake Out, I could have Bullet Punch. I don't see you leading with that. If it's yeah, Sash with, what is it, Shell Smash, you want to save it till my priority's gone. And if you lead Coco, you can U turn, U turn, U turn. Yeah, you get free U turn with Thunderbolt and some. Pretty good lead for him. And. You could triple axle, triple axle, close combat. I don't know if you'd see him be close combat. If you close combat, I can't really mega my Gyarados, but you could just get blown back by Dragon Ascent. Though I am minus one, so you could. And obviously, close combat on Melmetal, so. At least for me, I believe Rotom E is the best choice. For him, I believe Coco and Hitmon on top are the best choices. But out of those two, the better matchup against Rotom E is probably Coco. And as to what we both lead. Okay, Coco wrote on here. I, I completely agree with that. I think that was the best lead from both of us. And at least in his mind, I think this is currently neutral. Because I know I have Rising Voltage. I think this is biased for me. So I'd say a very good turn one. Both the optimal picks. But my set makes this better for me. And I looked at Calc, obviously, because you should, it's a semi-final. Do not rush the start of a battle, and then whip out the Calc when you're panicking. Use it from the start, please. The Searing Shot to Echoes, but so does Rising Voltage. So, unless it's Defensive Coco, but if I know that, it's pretty good for me, because I can then... Okay, I need to chip it more before I bullet punch it. Okay, I probably can't just aqua jet it, knowing that information's good, but I don't see a electric resist either. So I think rising voltage is the perfect turn one for me. And what happens? I rising voltage first. 43%. Now, wait, did I say? I think I said something wrong. Let me just. Let me just open a uh, damage calc because I think I said something wrong. <laughs> Let me see. Put in wrote on heat. Wrote on heat. Custom versus Tapu Coco specs. Okay, right. Yeah, right. So it's forty-four to fifty-two. But here's the thing. Even as Specs Coco, he doesn't do it. So it's 3 hit I meant to say. My bad. Because Coco does not have access to Rising Vultures in this format. That is complex band. Now, let's just suppose this was Fleur Cannon. Still, it does have, but it won't do it KO. So, obviously I can stone shot into it KO, but I don't see much harm in Rising Voltage. Do I need much help on this? Could have priority on him on top. I'd like to eat a hit from Victini, but Coco's good versus me. I would happily chip this. But if punch from Sizzle won't kill me, first impression won't kill me. Unless I'm like proper low, like down here. So I think going for the three hit KO, and what do I see? 43. That is just below the range. But remember, this is draft, so it can speed creep, what, 350 probably? Because of my, um, it's my fastest mod. Okay, yeah, that's probably modest actually, with how little speed it has to run. So, let's just assume it's running like an 80 HP or something. Like, yeah, that, that seems reasonable. Offensive Coco. And what does it do? U turns out. Very nice chip on Coco. Him on top comes in. Now, I still have a good matchup because if we look at Hip on top. Uh, this one's AV, right? No, okay. 
rising voltage versus a okay yeah that's a terrain up this is two hit KOing a max HP hit on top of course a soul burst exists so I am blind I don't two hit KO if the soul burst max HP but again I think you know let's go for it like fake outs that's interesting very interesting as fake out at least to me and then it protects fake out protects so i know from the protect now it is not av maybe that was a hasty rising voltage but where's my switch in do i bring the situai when it could have triple axle and very easily be faster i don't want to bring in gyarados that's like a wing con and that as i said is good late game when the dark resists are down Coco's half I want to get chip on the dark resist, so I have rising voltage as it protects shows me it's not AV and not AV means unless it's running serious spadef rising voltage guaranteed to hit KO and what do we see rising voltage 66% get CC'd I'm low but I'm alive lefty is probably going to protect here so I bring Decidui and I've seen lefties and that's 66 percent so this could be running fizz death i don't think you run i don't know lefties max attack protect fake out i don't really see that coming i think fake out lefties protect signifies defensive but this doesn't look specially defensive and i've seen this max hp on this and no but that seems reasonable Obviously it has Intimidate, so this probably looks like it was Mega Gyarados answer? I don't know, this is maybe well metal, this is a physical wall. So what does that mean? 130 to 262, 130 to 262. Now I'm running 68 speed. I think this is Fizz Def, so I don't think it's going to be running enough speed. So, I, so I'm like, you know, let's do this, go to Situai, Moongeist. That's the Dark Crisis down. That is huge for Mega Gyarados. If a team he comes in, that very aggressive. Because if it bolt strike there, doesn't seem likely. But that could be a prediction you make. And an electric move with a Coco, definitely gonna run one, I think. But especially when I have Mega Gyarados. But if it goes for it here, that is really, really bad for me. And if I get burnt here by a fire move, a very likely searing shots, V creates. I don't want to get burnt, but I come in intimidate so I can take the crate and it's blue flare. Now that's all right to chip. But let's look at Coke. You know what? I should have just I should have just imported the whole team. Why am I being different? Right. Let's go to the team. Get all the sets. I like showing the calcs helps me talk through why I am running all of these sets, why I'm doing all these plays. So yeah, I should have done this. I haven't done Mega Gyarados, have I? Where is it? Fourth? Fifth? Yeah, so Gyarados, Mega. And yeah, it's that easy to just import Mega. There is no reason to do what I have been doing. And we found out the Coco is likely offensive, so a plus one Aqua Jet does 52.59. That is at 56. So I... Is a sweep here realistic? Probably not. Probably not. But I go for it, which definitely too early, but I Dragon Dance a Victini's face and I Lariat it. And it's a Sash Victini. Focus Sash Victini. Now, yeah, that was greedy. I should have just Darkest Lariat. I should have just hit the Victini. Because with that Coco at that health, I'm not sweeping. And obviously, first impression sizzle is possible. That was really, really greedy. And now I've lost one of my best sweeps. I cannot act with Jedi Lego. Start bullet punch though. And 
yeah, it's kind of a bad position for me. So, what do I do? Do I finish this off with a bullet punch? What does that invite in? That invites in... I guess Coco could just revolt switch off my Melmetal. Bring in Sizzle. Probably superpower it then. I guess that's an alright kind of situation. But what, is, what happens if I bring in Rotom? Which I know it's Sash now, so I know I'm faster. I can Volt Switch out. What can I Volt Switch into? That has a good matchup. Gets Nihilago, Scizor, Blastoise, and Tap Coco. Now, I think of those mons left, I think the Sidui can take a hit. Once 18 is down, I think it can take a hit from anything left alive. I, nope, Sizzle gets Dragon Ascent. Maybe not. But I have an alright matchup with the Sidui and Unicorn. Only really scared of Blastoise, Melmetal. Sizzle gets in on it, but Sizzle gets in on Melmetal with like bullet punches for teeny anyway. So I decide I'm gonna finish with Rotom Heat, I'm gonna Volt Switch out. Yeah, it was a cool set, I had to admit that was a cool set. I do like focus sash on one like Victini. I don't actually remember what I Volt Switch into, so yeah, Need of Queen invites Blastoise, which I can bring in type null on. Decidui invites in uh Nihilago? Let's see. I really don't remember what I did here. Let's see. Um uh, Scarf. Sludge Wave. See, I'm bulky. I don't I don't really care. I get all right chip. I can two hit a KO, but obviously it, it is faster. I, th I think I'm gonna go Melmetal here. Let's see what I do. Nope, I do choose to Sidui, and Nihilico does come in. Right, now, it's between those two, but let's see, let's see. Now, Nihilico and the Sidui. Such a wave does not guarantee to it KO me. Leaf Storm guarantee doesn't KO it. Now, do I need this chip? Melmetal Ocos, Nidoqueen Ocos. I don't need this chip, but do I switch in? Type Null's alright, but look at my Type Null set. It can just... I guess the most it can do is try and Meteor Beam set up on me, but that's not going to do anything. I could get Toxic, which might be problematic later, but if it's Toxic, Am I really worried? I don't know. Now, all I can really do with that is just perish on, milk drink a bit, and then you turn out. I don't, I don't think Coco gets me as much as hard mill metal. Hard mill metal, and we see a sludge wave. Perfect. Really good, really good positioning here. Now, of course, I can just bullet punch. It okos this if it stays in. I could go for a. Okay, they're gonna go for a resist to bullet punch. They're gonna bring in sizzle. They're gonna bring in blastoise. I'm gonna thunder punch. And what do I do? It has terrible defense anyway. Thunder punch is always a play. Crits the sizzle for 50. But that's impressive bulk. So let's look at sizzle. Let's look at specially defensive. Thunder punch. Okay, that's reasonable. Thunder Punch Crit, 50.02, 50.04, reasonable, looks like a special defensive sizzle, now what does a special defensive sizzle take from Rotom Heat, oh look it's obviously Oko still, now, <sighs> what does it really do to my Melmetal that threatens it that much, I'm running lefties here, I don't care if I'm knocked off. Superpower, I have a huge defense stat. I'm trying to think what is the worst it can do, and probably Feather Dance, but even then, my next move us is gonna be a body press. So, I don't think they deal at all with Melmetal. 
at this point in the battle. I've dealt with both the checks to Mo Metal and I'm full health. And we can see. If I had a fire punch, really nice. Why does Mo Metal not have it? Nah. But anyway, Sizzle's half, a big crit, but I know it's defensive. And I know that this setting calc is very likely it. And what does that tell me about body press? It does fuck all. So the right play here, probably Thunder Punch, probably Double Iron Bash, but I don't think I actually calc this turn. I kind of remembered the Sizzle being Fizz Staff, which is problematic. But what? Why do I give it a free hit on Melmetal if, as we've seen, I don't kill? 47 max, it's at 50. 49.6. Who can switch in on Sizzle? Well, not Rotom of that health, and I need that alive to revenge it. Kinda want Decidueye alive to just blow back that Blastoise. Nido Queen has unresisted EQ, but Coco's not too far out of bullet punch rain, I can 2 hit KO that with Melmetal. All I have to do is sit in on it and double iron bash. So I definitely have outs if I lose Nido Queen here. As good as it is, it's still really good. I think Melmetal itself is more important. And yeah, we see lefties, so I go Nido Queen. Super perfect, perfect situation for me there because. Nido Queen in and healthy. So, yeah, free EQ against anything here, and that's minus defense. I'm um, Earthquake physical, so yeah, I take it out because it's specially defensive. Fire Blast would have, was not the play with Blastoise there. With Blastoise, is the bulkiest one left, so I Earthquake over Precipice Blades because I want the chip. Blastoise or the Kelvin Sizzle, which I do get anyway with Earthquake. So guaranteeing damage, definitely worth it. None of these take Earthquake well. And Sizzle drops. But in comes Blastoise. Now of course Blastoise is always the one that's coming here. Coco doesn't come in on Nido Queen. Nailego doesn't come in on Nido Queen. But I kind of want to keep Nido Queen healthy. Go hard Decidueye, but Ice Beam is possible. What if this is offensive? It could have came in because it's faster than me and can specs Ice Beam, which would hit my Decidueye too. I don't see a reason for it to predict a Dark Pulse Decidueye here. I mean, it's not Mega, so it'd probably run Ice Beam to hit Decidueye. And Need No Green as well, so not Dark Pulse. And. <laughs> There realistically is no reason to try and horse fear the Melmetal, otherwise suppose you do lose to it unless you hit it with something big soon. But I need something that deals with Shell Smash or a water move, and I do have a Sped Death type now right there full health as it Shell Smashes. Now this matchup I do wish I went with Mean Look, but obviously I didn't. And that's not the game we're in right now, so let's not bother talking about it. So what do I do? Only thing I can do, eat an Aura Sphere and Perish Song. Now there's no point in it going for another Shell Smash here, so it goes for a crit, I guess, can't crit me though. It just goes for that hit, so I heal up, and it goes for it again, because what else can I do? And here I am at 87, we both perish in one. Now... <laughs> It has to switch out, there's no way you let your last size drop, because then I win with Nido Queen, I win with Melmetal, I probably just win. As soon as Blastoise is low, I've won. Well, if it's in range of Rotom Heat, I've won, but let's look at that. Rotom Heat, Blastoise, did I spell it wrong? Blastoise, Shell Smash. It eats a hit, then it gets off the Shell Smash, then it outspeeds me. So, I need to get it in range of Volt Switch. 
If Coco puts up terrain, that is detrimental to this team. Because I can just rising voltage and win. So Coco does not want to come in. Naya Lego is an option here. So what happens? Coco comes in. Now Coco come in here. I just get to rising voltage the entire team, right? No, Coco still takes one. So if this terrain ends before you get in Rotom, that is very big for Robobop. So let's see what happens here. You turn obviously, I'm not gonna myself die. Nido Queen in for free. U turn, gets a chip on Nido Queen, but Blastoise has to take one. And right here, I could have stayed in. I really could have stayed in there because staying in, letting Nido Queen die. I then rising voltage the entire team. That would be way safer than the end game. Otherwise, I think as it was playoffs too, there's no reason going for kill difference. The play was always to sack Nido Queen to surf, origin pulse, whatever it's running. But I go type null because I believe I can still wall it. Cook comes back in, but it doesn't set up the terrain this time, which pretty hard. Play roughs gives me another free U-turn. This time I do go Rotom Heat, although it's not in a range anymore, so I have to Moon Guys Beam to finish it, because Rising Voltage can't really, can really work there. No, Meteor Beam's Naya Lego into my Melmetal. Running Spadaf lefties, not a problem. But look at this. I have I have my Spadef type null at 68. Now we've seen plus two Aura Sphere 39. I'm not two hit KO by Aura Sphere, unless that's set up. This is not fast than Rotom, but I don't OCO it. At plus two it can OCO to Sidui. Probably has a move to hit Nido Queen. I genuinely think my opponent's best play is to just stay in, Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, Earth Power, whatever this mod learns, try and kill my Melmetal here, and I, I genuinely do believe, yeah, because for Blastoise to sweep, you need more chip, you need to let it set up, and you cannot let it get perish solved. So, the play here is always to just stay in, hit, try and kill my Melmetal, and yeah, bullet punch, as they did make that play, because they had to, they had to, to win. But now Blastoise is going to try and shell smash, try and pull something. I have Thunder Punch, game's over. Now, I honestly think, like, when I was talking through the phase, I think there were two times I said what Robofuck did was, like, not what I would consider right. And that was bringing Coco, because the drink to herself, but how that health, it could be a hit from Roson, so... It's not really a big mistake. I think it is not the play I would have made, but it's still a good play. I letting Hitmon on top take this. I don't know, but there was no switch into Rising Voltage, so I don't know. But how else did Robo plan on dealing with Type Null? Did I think the plan was? I can shell smash on it again, I'll speed it even after the glare, shell smash again maybe even, and then oko it, but it was obviously max for death, so was that likely? I don't know. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I guess with that gone, it was still out to deal with Melmetal and Victini, obviously Victini won health here, is it worth keeping it healthy? No, because of bullet punch. Cannot check my metal here. My metal checks are down early. Really good for my game plan. Uh, yeah, free hit, really nice. Crit here was really nice. Cause that let me, uh, that let me kill over Needle Queen at minus one, which I got a lot from switching that in there. Even though Needle Queen was great, and that was a risk. Obviously, gear grinds possible would have. Get grinded into bullet punch would have killed me. Uh, yeah, Parasong, 
really helpful <laughs> because else, yeah, like I said, I glare it, but it can set up in my face. And I didn't bring glare because Mega Sableye was an option, which, ah, uh, looking at it, <laughs> didn't really want to Mega Evolve because then my metal wouldn't get Will O Wisp. Yeah, would it have helped? Maybe. Don't know. But I wasn't really running the stall team. This is probably the most offensive team I've ran this whole league. Probably the fastest game I've had. I've been running like really bulky Type Null stall stuff, so completely reasonable why that would not. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. Type Null really bulky. Keeping it healthy, of course, the right play. Physical Coco, reasonable, makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, Scarf wrote on Heat was huge here, because like I said, speed tiers at the start, I couldn't really bring any of my fastest ones. I'm not gonna bring Scarf, Mime, G Mr. Mime Galash, because I'll say Mime Junior. Yeah, I really had to for the um, speed tier. And uh, yeah, that, that was... Rulefoot made the plays he had to make to win the game. But I recognised with my type null this healthy, my Mel metal this healthy, and Rotom Heat in the back, I cannot let those plays happen, because they are the way that I lose this. So I think that was really well played from Robopup. If he'd had a better draft, this would have been a close game. Like, he played that well. And this is the problem right here. No Ghost Resist, I have Decidueye. No Ground Resist, I have Nido Queen. It's just simply not a good enough draft for a semi finals match. Like, getting two semi finals for this team is impressive. Especially as he, I believe, he's got the number two seeded player. But. This team just, it just won't cut it in semis, but I've seen good plays from him, definitely a good player, just different draft, different story. Now let's open his paste. I've made this really long for a 20 turn battle while. Um, can we see the sizzle is sticky web, which is the first thing I notice. Don't need calc now, close battle, we've seen it. Sticky web. Fastest Mon doesn't care about Sticky Web. Mr. Mime Galar, still slower than Ayalego. I guess Scarf Mr. Mime Galar could have been a problem with Freeze Dry, Ice Beam, Psychic. Maybe. Maybe for that. Como? I didn't, I didn't think Como would ever come against Tapu Koko. And I didn't bring Como, but would Como being webbed have helped? I'm not faster than Kiram, so maybe not, but I have brought Scarf Como again. But Kiram didn't come, so I don't know why Webs was there. But yeah, I think Kiram and Mega Sableye both could have easily came here. What would I change on this team that was brought? I do not know. But I don't I don't think Webs helps much since the slowest team in the league. Although I guess Gyarados after it's Mega Evolved comes in on Webs. That hurts it. I need another Dragon Lance. I don't hit Coco, but of course it's Aqua Jet or Sucker Punch, which I definitely should have went with over Aqua Jet here. Um, you know, Nido Queen does not care about webs. Is this already slow as hell? Slow as hell, slow as hell, slow as hell. I don't think webs was worth a move sort there, but yeah, I, I said Spit Death maybe. No, it's HP and attack, which is completely reasonable. With bullet punch and with webs, you don't really want to be running too much speed. Now, Paul had my Lego Mutual Beam, Power Gem, Sludge Wave, Dazzling Gleam. Cannot touch my metal, but when you're building this team, do you ever plan it to stay in on my metal with bullet punch? No, I don't think you would ever plan for it staying on that. Did it have to at the end? Yes, but would you plan for that? No. It's reasonable. Special Victini with Scarf. I love that. Blue Flare, Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, Focus Blast. Well, I guess Focus Blast, Dazzling Gleam, both aim to hit my Gyarados after Megas. I wouldn't risk staying on it, not Mega, because obviously Bolt Strike. 
or Thunderbolt, but it's running special Victini along with physical um, Coco, which is good. Like I said, Ice Beam on the Blastoise make perfect sense. An Origin Pulse, oh my god, if that was Mega, it would be over. Um, hit my top, close to my axle, fake up protect, reasonable. Attack, defense, but death, okay. That's interesting, lefties with no HP investment, but yeah, um, I guess, yeah, this was to deal with Mega Garros, deal with Type Null, and Spit Death on it to deal with. Uh, maybe just to take it from Decidueye better, maybe to take Psychic from Mimegala, which is reasonable. Physical Attacker with Roost Boots, cool set, cool set. Yeah, Adamant, I was going to say it's Adamant, so it's not running much bulk, like I calced. I think this is a cool team. Um, I'd say, what would I change? I'm on top for Sizzle and some. I him on top for um, Sableye maybe, I was more scared of, but this set seems reasonable, it has uses, and Mega Yaros is a huge threat. But, with these two here, kind of check it. Maybe I change webs for first impression here, but, yeah, webs for first impression here, Mega Sableye there is what I would do. I don't know where I'd fit Kiram, but I'd want it here. But, this team is good. Yeah. I just, just something immune to ground, something resisting ghost, and this team is threatening. So that's it for that should be it for this video. I've I've made this so much longer than it had to be, haven't I? But I'm not used to videos like this where I try and actually talk through plays, what I think is optimal, where I think I should have done something differently. Normally I play live, so I'm just in the moment, and I don't, I don't talk what I'm thinking. I just don't speak through it because I don't know why I don't speak through it. Hmm. Yeah, what would I have done differently? Maybe, maybe I would have brought in Melmetal over to Sidui that one turn after I Volt Switch Victini. I really don't know. I think I played that well. I think Robopup played that well, but the teams were just such. Such a heavy advantage. Earthplate, Nido Queen, Max Tag, Earthquake, Specs, Decidueye, Moon Guys, Beam, Unresisted. That matchup was. Well, I'd say that was probably 90 10 to me. That was a horrible matchup, so. Playing well simply <laughs> isn't, isn't enough. Playing well against a matchup that bad. You simply cannot win by playing well, you need your opponent to play badly, and I don't think I played badly, so I made it through, and puts me in the final against Ansar Cool, who, gonna be honest, I was really, really hoping Kyobi would beat, because I am scared of this team, and he has a lot more experience than me. So, we'll be back sometime in the near future, maybe live, maybe I'll do it like this, because... Quite, quite enjoyed this really, actually talking through plays objectively, not talking through them at the moment when I'm under pressure, but talking through them when I'm level headed, when I know what's going on, I know what happened. I think, hmm, I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely make a video on it, I mean it's my first final. Even if I get 6-0, I can learn from it, and it will be a very, very good experience. So, yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. Goodbye. Like, subscribe, and uh, send this video to your mum because YouTube Analytic tells me that only 90% of my audience are mothers of two. Why is it so low? So make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.